Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, sanctuary looks pretty nice, doesn't it? We had uh, some intrepid uh, decorators here yesterday. Uh, I was just down here getting the coffee ready for this morning, you know. Got and um, in came uh, Paul and Sam, and then I guess uh, they were later joined after I escaped from helping. Uh, I helped bring the stuff out of the attic, then I disappeared. But um, and then Janet and Louise were here, and um, we thanked them. They did a great job of decorating. So uh, thank you very much. Looks nice in here. <laughs> and here's Louise. Okay. <laughs> She'll be available for uh, autographs at the end of the service. She told me so. Uh, okay. Other announcements are in the bulletin. Um, next week is uh, one of one of the favorites. Uh, it's the cookie walk. So if you um, I can bring some cookies, that'd be great. If you want to take some home, that'd be great as well. So that'll be coming up, and the cantatas in two weeks. We're getting our um, new audiovisual um, equipment to uh, put, you know, keep putting the services online. And uh, so if anyone, um, we're going to need some help, though. One of the ideas of this is that it's much easier to use than what we're currently using, and that enables Paul to not have to be back there every Sunday. Uh, he'll still do that and kind of supervise that, but uh, we can get other people trained, but we need people to train. So if you think you would like to um, learn how to be a TV producer, this is your opportunity. Um, and in fact, I think uh, next, starting in next calendar year, we may actually reimburse people for doing this. So, um, so see, uh, uh, let somebody know, uh, Paul or myself or anyone else, uh, Lydia, uh, that if you'd like to uh, do that, um, we'll get you trained because the company that's bringing the equipment will train people to do this. So, okay. Let's see. All right. Do people uh, have other announcements? Yes, Lydia. We are doing 40 baskets for Christmas this year, food baskets. We've already put it on the Sign Up Genius, but we still have plenty of other slots left. So if you want to donate anything, including money, because we have to buy the hams, please see me after church and we'll get things set up. The food needs to be in here Friday morning the 16th. Colleen and Kim will be here, and definitely by the morning of the 17th, because the baskets will be going out later that morning. Thank you. Thank you, and we're 40 baskets. And now how about, what, I got 85 or 86 kids, right, the Barb? 87. 87 now or a day? Oh, the new one we got was, it makes 87. Come speak in the mic here, and people are listening coast to coast might wanna send gift cards or something. 87 kids and teens. I still have about, I think, 20 wish lists that haven't been claimed. I did shop with some of the donations yesterday for four of the list, so we got four of them covered. And I'll be able to cover some more too, but I, I know that um, if anybody wants a wish list, this is a good time to take one. And of course, we'll still take donations of cash checks or gift cards to help out with that. Thanks. That's a large number of folks. Is that the biggest we've ever had, or is that? I think maybe it is. Huh? Oh. Well, these are. Tough times when he's trying to pay the heating oil bill or uh, other things, uh, or get gas. Well, okay, other announcements? Yes, oh, Lynn. We'll flip for it, no, okay. I'll go and then I'll bring you the microphone. Okay, um, good morning. I have a couple of announcements. Um, our cookie walk is going to be next Sunday, the 11th, right after service. Um, right now we have eight people that have signed up to bake four dozen cookies apiece, um, and so they have already been entered into winning, uh, well, getting a chance to win uh, a cake made by our own Shepherd Bassett here in town, um, who has graciously volunteered to donate one of her delicious creations. Um, so if you are available to bake four dozen cookies, if you would either see me after service or sign up on the bulletin board, that would be greatly appreciated because I'd hate for us to have more customers than cookies. Um, next is 
that on uh, Sunday the 18th, we're going to be doing a quick little, during children's sermon, uh, quick little presentation for you with the Sunday school kids. So you'll be able to see that on Sunday the 18th. And uh, if you are interested in signing up for the after service fellowship snacks in the coffee hour, um, we have a sign up out there. We're looking for some people to sign up for a few weeks and there'll be a new one for the new year coming up soon. Next announcement. Um, I was contacted by somebody who is uh, just a friend of the church and they are looking to donate a nice 50 inch TV um, that is a bit old, but a flat screen TV, plasma, Panasonic, perfect conditioned. It has a stand remote. It works just fine. It doesn't have a box. But if you know of somebody that could be in need of a new TV, um, then let me know and I can get you in touch with this person who is more than happy to send it on its way to another new home that could benefit from it. That's all. Thank you. you okay. Yes, you're on. Yeah. singing in Milford this year. It is this afternoon at 4 o'clock at the Milford United Methodist Church. There is a poster on, in the hallway, so if you forget what I say, you can look at the poster. Um, but this afternoon at 4 o'clock. So we hope to see a lot of you there. I just wanted to give a, a bigger shout out about the cantata. So Saturday, the 17th, two weeks from yesterday, uh, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we will be doing the cantata with the Hillside uh, Church and any other, we think we might have some others joining us. They, <laughs> we haven't seen them yet, but, <laughs> oh, but just the, the, the two groups that are mentioned, we're going to perform it. We'd love to see you all there. Please spread the word. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful collection of music. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are there any other announcements? Thanks. Um, I just wanted to, um, my mother watches us every week, and today is her birthday. Oh. I wanted to sing happy birthday for her. Her name is Carlene. 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 Ar Carlene. <laughs> okay, are there other uh, birthdays? Do you have a birthday? We said happy birthday to the last Well, there's no doubling up here now. You get the only reason we double up, but you get old very quickly that way. Christine and Carlene. There we go. Okay, anyone else? Okay, we'll sing happy birthday. I didn't mean to cut anyone off. Did anybody else have an announcement? Okay, if not, we begin the service with our morning program.
come to worship the God who loved the world so much that he sent his only son into our midst that all who believe in him might have life here and now and life eternally. Let us begin to worship as we sing our opening Christmas carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, which is number 249. comes from the prophet Isaiah in the 11th chapter, and we read it together. It's on the announcement side of our bulletins. A shoot will come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch will grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the bell around his loins. faith this morning with the words of the Apostles' Creed on the inside cover of our hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, 
the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Great. Our scripture uh, lesson comes from Luke, uh, the first chapter, and we'll begin with the uh, 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Here ends our reading. So as we get uh, prepared here to uh, light the second Advent candle, uh, please take a moment to say good morning to those around you as the uh, kids come up. We'll light this candle. Last week we uh, lit the uh, we lit the candle of hope. Today we lit the candle of faith. And I think um, I'll get into this a little bit longer, but um, in the sermon. But I think uh, faith is something that we have for God. But I think Christmas tells us that God also has some faith in us as his children, that each and every child of God is important. Okay, so the kids will go out to Sunday school and uh, we're going to get to the sermon. All right. I have uh, occasion, occasionally wondered, uh, as a child who was adopted, you know, about my parents and, um, and uh, who my biological parents were. And I think I've resolved that. As most of you know, I'm the, I'm the adopted uh, child. I'm the, uh, my natural father uh, was uh, JFK. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, and so that would make my grandfather, I guess, Joseph P. Kennedy. I have contacted various lawyers, but I haven't gotten any uh, share of his uh, fortune that I'm sure he wanted, wanted to, uh, would have wanted to leave something to me. But, um, um, but I never, um, growing up with my mom and dad, uh, never had a grandfather that was alive. So I, I, I've learned a little bit about my grandfather from things that I've been told. And, one of my grandfathers must have been quite a, quite a, a gentleman. Um, they told me he had the heart of a lion and um, a lifetime banned from the zoo. So I don't know what that means, but think it through, it's okay now. Well, uh, we're uh, in the letter L in my kind of 
fantasy world of going through the alphabet of faith here, an alphabet of faith, not the alphabet of faith. Because, um, And so I considered L. Now, what was I going to talk about? I said, maybe I'll preach about Leviticus. I can see Craig laughing here because that, that, uh, I've never given a sermon on Leviticus. Um, I don't think it would be too exciting, but it's a, in, sometime I'll maybe try to do that. So I thought, well, uh, Christmas time certainly would be appropriate to talk about love. I mean, that's the spirit of the season. And uh, certainly uh, it was an act of love uh, by God uh, to come into our world in the form of a baby uh, named Jesus to a mother named Mary. Um, that's, um, that's about God. I mean, the most famous verse probably in the New Testament is, for God so loved the world. And Christmas is, um, is the epitome of loving the world because he came in to our world to teach us how to love one another and to promise us that we would live with him in eternity. So that's certainly love, uh, an act of God. Uh, but when you think of it, uh, Jesus came, preached a message, and lived a message that God loves us and wants us to love one another. Uh, but hopefully, in one way or another, we, we try to talk about love almost every week. But I think there's something equally important, a uh, word of faith that starts with an L, and that is life, human life. Um, and that's something worth considering because it's something God created. And God came into our world to teach us, I think, uh, in large part, uh, how to live life and teach us also that life continues beyond this life. Now, here's a, Frederick Buechner is a great help when you're preaching through the alphabet, of course, because he has a book. Um, the book is called Beyond Words, Daily Readings in the ABCs of Faith. So if you look up uh, under L, you get to life. Here's the first part of what he says. Life. The temptation is always to reduce it to size. A bowl of cherries, a rat race, amino acids, even to call it a mystery smacks of reductionism. It is the mystery. As far as anybody seems to know, the vast majority of things in the universe do not have whatever life is. Sticks, stones, stars, space, they simply are. A few things are and are, are somehow alive to it. They have broken through into something or something has broken through into them. Even a jellyfish, a butternut squash, they're in it with us. We're all in it together. And it is in us. Life is it. Life is it. Is with. After lecturing repeatedly on miracles, a great theologian was asked to give a specific example of one. There is only one miracle, he answered. It is life. Interesting to think about. Well, Christmas, of course, is all about God becoming one of us. Um, coming as the most vulnerable human being ever is, a newborn baby. The child of a young woman, uh, many people believe Mary was a teenager, uh, and a blue-collar father, at least on earth, uh, who was a carpenter. And the two of them were not yet married. They were in an engagement situation. Now, Cheryl just uh, started with a group uh, looking at Mary uh, or rather looking at Joseph. We usually look at Mary. But um, Joseph is a, an important part of the mix here. Um, and um, that's what her study group is looking into. We'll talk a little bit about Joseph next week when we talk about Mary as well. But uh, I think that God, um, one of the reasons he came was that we could better understand who God was in the form of a human being. Jesus. But I think also God came, perhaps, um, so that he could better understand uh, who his children are. I mean, God was never a human being, right? His spirit is in all human beings, but God came 
uh, in a special way, some kind of way beyond um, my pay grade to explain it to you. But in that little baby was a God who was going to learn, not only teach, but learn what it's like to be a human being, I believe. Um, uh, living in a family, something that we all do. And if we're fortunate, you know, we only do that um, with the same family. There are children right now in the um, foster care system that go from house to house to house. Uh, I don't know if Lynn, I don't see Lynn Lombard out there today, but she works uh, for an organization that represents these children and tries to look out for their welfare um, as a volunteer. And um, not an easy way to, to grow up, but most of us are fortunate enough to grow up in a family. Uh, and that's uh, what Jesus did. And they had the problems uh, sometimes that exist in all families. I mean, think about the story about when Jesus is about 12, and they take him from Nazareth, where they were living, um, to Jerusalem to visit um, uh, the temple. And when it's time to go home, they get on the bus and start back to uh, Nazareth and realize, Mary and Joseph, that where's Jesus? Well, of course, they find him in the temple. Um, if any of the rest of us were 12, I'm not sure we would have been at the temple, but that's where he was. But imagine the fear parents have when all of a sudden you don't know where your child is. I think any of us that have been parents know what that is. And, and the fear children have sometimes if they all of a sudden realize that mom or dad as they're growing up, isn't right there next to them. It's one of the difficult things about first going to school uh, when you start doing that. So Jesus came to understand what it's like to grow up in a, a family. Um, he learned to um, figure out how to work to make a living for his family. And when Joseph was gone, he had taught Jesus to be a carpenter, and Jesus... Uh, was a carpenter for quite a period uh, of time. Probably till he, we don't know, but we think maybe till he was 29, 30 years old, he supported his mom and his brothers as a carpenter. And then he got a very un unsteady job. He became a preacher, an itinerant preacher. Now, he didn't have television. Boy, can you imagine if Jesus had come and there was television? Um, I don't think he would have uh, tried to get people to spend their life savings, but, you know, he had to exist uh, with his disciples, and he got donations to do that. He was an itinerant preacher. People would bring food. People would bring money. I mean, they had a treasurer among the disciples, keep track of the funds so they could survive. His name was Judas. We've had treasurers here that were much better than Judas, I can tell you that. But... Um, but they had a treasurer. That was important. So Jesus knew what it was like to work and support a family. Now, what's the most difficult thing in life? Probably the most difficult thing in life is losing a loved one. I mean, in, in my job, I, I, I perform a lot of funerals. That is a very difficult I mean, it's not difficult to perform the funeral, but it's a difficult experience for all of our families and all of us um, when we lose a loved one to death. Um, Jesus came to understand what that was like. Um, I'm sure he did when Joseph died. We don't know exactly when that was, but there's an incredible story. I think it's in Luke. I should have looked this verse up. Um, when Mary and Martha... Uh, and their brother Lazarus, who lived in Bethany, uh, uh, they got word to Jesus that uh, uh, Lazarus was sick. And he goes to Bethany to see Lazarus, but Lazarus has already died. And the Bible verse that's the shortest, if you ever ask this, um, I don't know if they ever ask this on Jeopardy, probably not, but what is the shortest verse of the Bible? It's in Luke, in that Lazarus story, it's simply two words. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now, he wept even though he knew he could bring Lazarus back. He felt the pain that Mary and Martha felt, 
and all Lazarus' friends, friends felt, and he wept. We have a God who not only loves us, but feels our pain. And we find that in the Lazarus story. And then, uh, you know, Jesus lived a life that was bound to get him in trouble. Not that he was robbing banks, uh, but he was, in many ways, a threat to the political system in which he lived, which happened to be the Roman Empire at the time. He was a threat, and uh, the folks that were in the uh, ruling group in Jerusalem, connected to the temple, um, were there to, uh, their hope was to keep, keep order because they knew the Romans could slaughter them if a revolt were to start, and that's probably one of the reasons they were very worried about Jesus. He wasn't preaching violent revolution, but they were afraid that that might occur. So, uh, but he didn't hesitate with what he said. He, he told the truth as he saw it, and he troubled the political system in which he lived. And then, like all of us uh, will, he died. And his death uh, was not only particularly painful uh, physically, but it was painful because uh, he had been deserted by almost all of his closest friends. We kind of remember during Lent that the only disciple who showed up at Calvary uh, was young John. And of course, Jesus, the female disciples who Jesus probably thought of as Equal, I don't know, to the, uh, to, the, to the male disciples, but they're not named in the scriptures as equal, uh, but they certainly were great disciples. Uh, Mary as mother and another Mary and, and Mary Magdalene are there with young John, but that's, that's it. Peter and James and John and all the other folks are in hiding, afraid that they're going to get arrested as well. You recall Peter three times denies from the time Jesus arrested uh, until the dawn, the next morning, that he even knows Jesus. Feels pretty badly afterward. So Jesus experienced human life in the good parts and in the not-so-good parts. So God, I think, gives us life. And in Jesus, he gives us guidance on how to live life. Christmas reminds us to live our lives as fully as we can each and every day. But Christmas also reminds us, it seems to me, that God not only came to teach us and to heal us, but also perhaps to better understand the human experience from death, from birth to death, and all that's in between. God wants us to embrace life and to live it fully. So let me close again with the words of somebody much smarter than me, and that's Mr. Beekner. This is the second part of his, uh, his talk about life. Have you wept at anything during the past year? Has your heart beat faster at the sight of young beauty? Have you thought seriously about the fact that someday you are going to die? More often than not, do you really listen when people are speaking to you instead of just waiting for your turn to speak? Is there anybody you know in whose place, if one of you had to suffer great pain, you would volunteer yourself? If your answer to all or most of these questions is no, the chances are you were dead. Life. A life filled with love. God's greatest gift. And it came in the form of a baby at Bethlehem. And we celebrate um, its meaning. And we celebrate his teachings uh, as we live our life. So let's share in our hymn as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Uh, our hymn is number 462.
his table is not the community church table, it is not the Presbyterian church table, it is the Lord's table, and all are invited to partake in his meal. And let us bow together in prayer. Gracious God, we confess that we don't always follow your teachings. We sometimes treat others in unloving and uncaring ways. We sometimes conduct ourselves in ways that you would not have us act. And yet, you love us. We ask your forgiveness for the times we have disappointed you and disappointed others in our lives. We thank you that you promise to forgive us. You promise to be with us. And you promise to help us as we live each day, trying to be your followers. We now ask your blessing upon these elements of bread and wine and juice, that they remind us of the depth of your love that we find in the crucifixion and in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Bless them and bless us, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that might not have had to commune with us before, we have on the trays both crackers and bread. The crackers are gluten-free, and we have both grape juice and wine. So take whatever is appropriate for you, and uh, our tradition here is to pass it around and eat it together, and then to drink together. We'll let us share together in the Lord's Supper. supper, Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to them, and he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Jesus took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood that you shed for you and for many. We drink this in his memory. And let us bow together in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your never-ending love and for giving us the great gift of life. We also thank you that you are a forgiving God and an encouraging God and a God who calls us forth to do our best to make this world a bit more of your kingdom. Help us to be forgiving. Help us to be loving. Help us to be serving. We ask in Jesus' name, and we ask your special blessing upon those who are sick and for those who are suffering in one way or another from the pain that sometimes come in life. Be with us, we ask in Jesus' name, as we share the prayer which he taught us praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will it be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God, we ask your blessing upon these our gifts and upon all of us. May we be your servants. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 256. Bless us and keep us and make his face to shine upon us and grant us peace now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.